Hello, everyone. Hello, hello, hello. I am. This is my first morning sort of off, and I, I have to go to work in just a little bit anyway, but I just wanted to come on and update you and chat with you and and just see how everybody's doing. So I'm going to work a little bit on my ATCs. I'm also going to work a little bit on my project. Hey, Jamie. How are you, Mama? So I don't. I haven't talked to you guys in a long time. Well, since last week, I have my new job is like kicking my butt. It is totally kicking my butt. <laughs> but hi. Hey, Christy. My new job is kicking my ass, you guys. I mean, it is like seriously kicking my ass. I am so tired. I don't even know whether I'm coming or going. And I've had literally zero, 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 zero time to art. None, none, none. So tell me about you guys. Tell me, tell me about you guys. And excuse my family when they come in because they're going to be really loud and that's just how it rolls. So I'm more, hey, Rosie, you're at work. Ooh, what do you do for work, Rose? Um, I started a new job, Jamie. I started a job where I am curating a gallery space, but it is kicking my butt. It's like I'm, I'm taking, I'm working with a company that's been around for a long time, but they primarily are, um, I don't know. They're they're like handmade furniture makers and stuff like that. But they have spaces and they have people in their in their galleries and they wanted to start a, a fine art gallery and that's my specialty, right? I've run lots of gallery businesses in my life and I hi Joie, how are you? I really enjoy it, but this particular one is just it's like I'm having to take somebody who has no gallery experience and has a, and try to t transform their minds. They've only had retail stores, and retail and galleries aren't the same. Hey, Angela, how are you? Hi, Mitts. You guys, I'm I'm barely like today was the first day of school, so my older daughter, who the one I told you that lives in China, she's home helping me, and it's. Today's the first day of school, so we got up and did our things. And then I can only stay on a little bit because I have to I have to go to work in a little bit. <laughs> you think Jamie says she thinks I need to hide one of my junky glue books in every corner. Oh my god. You guys I can't even take pictures of it. I should take pictures of it so that you guys could see the before and after. But right now I'm to the point where I'm so tired that I'm feeling like I don't know. I'm so exhausted, it's ridiculous. So, Christy says she's prepping canvases and painting papers until you have to go to work. Ah. Rosie, what do you do for work? Big hugs to all you guys. I'm still, look, I still haven't completed my ATCs. I've got, like, tons of backgrounds. Some have little bits on them. Now they just, need, like, either need words or, or whatever. I don't know. I haven't quite gotten it together yet. You're exporting a video, Joie. I love your videos. I don't get to watch them all the time. You guys go over it. See right next to Joie's channel. I mean, her name. Go over. There's three dots. Make sure you like and subscribe to her channel. And then hit those notification bells. And join her. Join her live premiere tomorrow. Angela says you're exhausted too. It's a long weekend weekend. You're trying to relax and play. Wow, Rosie. That's intense. Rosie, Rosie says she works. She's a hospital patient access rep. Oh, oh. So you guys, let's see. I I got to get on to Maridel Abrams' stream this morning. Well, it's late at night for me, guys. It's usually when I'm getting home. It's like eleven o'clock at night, and she gets home. I mean, and she goes on to her early mornings. And there was a. It was quite an interesting conversation, and I don't know all the ins and outs of it because I haven't been in a lot of people's lives lately. Oh, yeah, I haven't been in anybody's lives lately. Um, the conversation was about how YouTube's changing its platform. Is anybody else experiencing that? 
<clears throat> and then I went back and she told me, look, you guys, I have two cups of coffee, black and my keto coffee. That's, isn't that ridiculous? She was telling me that, um, or she was explaining that in one of the groups that we're in, Creative Arts Collaboration, somebody posted, which I went back and looked, and said that 75% of her view time is suddenly diminished. And that YouTube is changing its platform to be more mainstream. Oh my gosh, Angela, big hugs and lots of love to you. Rosie, we love you. If you guys haven't checked out Rosie's channel, go check it out. It's Creative Wing. She makes the most beautiful art journals and art journaling pages. And she's incredibly inspiring. And I think all of you would really love hanging out with her. Um, I certainly do when I get the chance, which is not always often, but I try. So... What, does anybody know how it's changing? I don't really know. This is, I, you guys, all I know is I entered into Meridel's stream at, it was 4 a.m. her time, 11 o'clock my time in the night, right, or 11 p.m., and she was having this discussion. They were talking about the changes on YouTube and how, and then I went to a creative arts collaboration where somebody, um, where somebody actually talked about it. I'm going to put some of my painting papers on the, for the backgrounds of these. I love your, I love your channel, Rosie. I love watching you. I don't know exactly what's going on. The only thing that I can figure out is that, you know, YouTube is, we find it just like community building, right? And that's what it really was in the beginning. You could like share all your information. You could you know, do all the things you wanted to do on it, and it felt like it belonged to you, right? But I think because of whatever's going on with not just media and social media, but with other things, I think YouTube, you know, it's a money-making venue, so they're, like, looking to become more mainstream. Haven't you seen how now they're having, like, they're showing movies on YouTube, like, they, they upload movies every month now on YouTube, full-length features on YouTube of, of movies that have been out for a while. I don't think there's anything new, but, um, so I don't know. Maybe they're just heading toward a film business. I don't know. Chrissy says she's not sure, but she's been thinking about utilizing Facebook more for a long time. I get a lot more views there than when I do videos. Angela says they're moving toward more of a Netflix platform. That must be true. I mean, it's, it is a money-making business, so, I mean, I understand. But you know what? I think the changes affect us because... I think the changes affect us because, you know, it's all in a search... It's a search engine ranking, right? So if you... If you don't get noticed by the search engine, nobody finds your videos, right? And so I think that's how it, it's going to affect us. I think, I think that, and I think that, um, I think something else will open up. I mean, just the way Ustream changed. Remember, everybody used to love being on Ustream, and then Ustream changed, and now you have to be a paid member to even stream or watch. I don't know. You guys, all I'm saying is, you know, diversify. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. You know, diversify, like Christy says, do some Facebook, do some Facebook Lives or picture videos or Vimeo. Vimeo might be the next one. I don't know. I mean, I do watch some videos on Vimeo. I mean, I don't know. Hi, Maria. Angela says, when it comes, when it became, when it became about the views and all that, it's changed everything. Even our crafty community, I feel... Like, the heart of why I joined has been lost, in my humble opinion. Angela, you're probably very correct. I mean, I don't know. My partner, he's been on YouTube for a long time. He used to have a really successful channel, and then when we moved to Hawaii, he just stopped. But he was, like, reminding me of the time when you could, like, say you would, say you would go to some big channel that had, like, hundreds of thousands of subscribers and... 
and you could comment on their video and you could post a link to your video or to your video or you can make a video response and then all of their followers would come over and and check out your channel and you know he said that was really the power of community and we were talking about it and we were talking about how it's changed over the years and you know every platform has to change but for those of you that depend upon like YouTube for your monetary like things it might be something that you start looking somewhere else to do because I have a feeling that it's just gonna change you know like all of a sudden and you know it's not if it's gonna become more like a Netflix it's gonna be production value they're not gonna want somebody that sits in glue sticks their ATCs <laughs> so diversify you know create your own forums make sure you have an email capture if you're depending upon people and yeah, utilize the free forums that are out there, you know, utilize Facebook and whatever other things that you can. Hi, Joni. Angela says, I just want to share my passion with those that have the same passion. This, that's why I shut down my chronic crafter channel. And so I always enjoyed watching you. I always enjoyed lurking and watching. It usually came on at a time for me that I couldn't, um, that I wasn't so, you know, it wasn't an early time, but I would always love to watch you. Hi, Bunny. You'll always be here to watch me glue paper. You guys are so hilarious. No, but you know what I think it is? I think it's, um, I don't know. YouTube used to feel like it was personal for me. Like, I could go on and I watch somebody and I'd feel like, you know, I've watched people for a long time before I ever even jumped into it. Hi, Curly. Before I ever even jumped into doing any sort of videos like that was never my um, I don't know I never even thought about doing it um, and I actually only began to live stream because my oldest daughter was like why aren't you live streaming you know like she was like she kind of like goes here I set you up go hi Mary Lou all I'm saying is that those of you that care about each other and care about each other's channels Make sure that you're if you if you're a Facebook person, make sure you're subscribed on Facebook or you're in some sort of like group or your friends on Facebook. Because if YouTube suddenly stops, say say for whatever reason, YouTube suddenly says, okay, well we're not going to take any, we're not going to have any anybody on that doesn't have a certain amount of subscribers. Then you won't lose contact with them. You know what I mean? Yeah, I don't know. You guys, I'm like, I'm in that space of like where everything is a sales job kind of feeling. And I'm also in this like very, I don't know. I guess all this had to happen to me so that I would like, I don't know, take my, get off my butt and do something different. I don't know. I don't know nothing. So I found all these old painting papers. I was looking for something to help my daughter last night. My little one started school today and Okay, I'm just going to vent. Are any of you teachers? No, because if you were teachers... Hi, Linda! Because if you were teachers, you wouldn't be here, right? So, I'm going to just vent about summer homework. Okay, so, they give your kids summer homework. Now, we help her with her homework. We're all here. My daughters, my partner, my daughter's husband. We all are, like, so supportive of her. Okay? Because I told you guys she has some, some learning differences. When three college graduates can't fi figure out what the summer homework is, how bad is that, okay? When, when it takes three college graduates looking at it going, I don't know what this is. <laughs> I mean, it's so ridiculous. Bye, Jamie. Love you. Oh, I was like, oh, my God. I was like, it's so, so ridiculous. Three of us could not figure out. Sixth grade, going into seventh grade, summer homework. <laughs> Hi, Diana. You're not late. You're never late, girl. Oh, my God. We were like, this is ridiculous. The three of us cannot figure it out. <laughs> okay, that's my vent. And, you know, she went, she went for the summer to see her dad. And I sent some of it with them, but not all of it. And they didn't even do it. Okay. <laughs> Summer homework, you never heard of it? Oh, Joni. 
How long have your kids been out of school? They do it. They give summer homework. It's not just summer reading. Okay, we had to do this. What made my daughter, my oldest daughter so frustrated was that she was like, clearly this packet is shared from another program where they've explained to the kids exactly what to do. And now we're just getting a piecemeal of that and we're not even getting all of it. I was just like, oh my gosh, I laughed so hard. The two of us were like, this is so stupid. <laughs> it's so, so stupid. Well, I hope you come back. Angela, I hope you come back and do, because I always enjoyed watching you craft. I hope you come back. But I understand if you don't. And for those of you, you know, cross-promote each other. You know, there is enough in this world to go around. There's no reason, if you're live streaming, not to shout out to some of your favorite channels or some of the little-known channels that you enjoy. There's enough. It's like changing a channel on the television. There is enough to go around and yeah I get some comments sometimes like why are you always promoting other people because I really believe in community because I know you know nothing is built on its own you can't and, and there's not one person that is like more important than anybody else even if they have a million subscribers <laughs> summer homework yes oh yes we had to read a book we had to oh, I can't even tell you it was so, something so ridiculous we had to read she read a bunch of books. But then you had to do this. You had to do a project. You had to um, do a story map. You had to do, I don't know. It is just ridiculous. It was super ridiculous. I love all of you crafty peeps. You're my friends. You're like my, okay, so let's just say, let's just say we all hoard our, our own viewers, right? We never, we never push past and watch anybody else or do anything else. Then what? You're just in your own bubble. I love hanging out with you guys and I love seeing what everybody else does. You know, I do. I really, really, really do. Hi, Karen. How are you? Your kids don't even have reading homework, but your kids love to read. Wow. Oh, that's nice. Mary Lou says, if no one's on, she puts on a playlist to give people views. So, what, so I have this whole, I am going to eventually finish all my ATCs, but I did find all these ATC, all these like penny papers that I made, I don't know when. And so I just thought I'd live in that. I'm just working on some ATCs. You guys were still doing our month. We're doing a monthly ATC swap over and crafting moms on Facebook and anybody can join. Um, the one for August just, we just assigned partners, but we'll do one again in September. It'll probably be around the 10th of September or maybe a little later. Making artist trading cards. And so, you know, like artist trading cards are like so fun to make because they're small. They're just little small pieces of art. Your daughter's beginning your daughter was begging you yesterday to go to the library. Oh, that's so good. Anyway, what's on your crafty tables? You guys, my job is like, I, I feel like I just barely get home and, and I have to get up again to go to work. Okay, you guys want to have a laugh. All right, this is how my life goes. Okay, you guys know how the I'm so ridiculous and everything that happens to me seems to be ridiculous. So, I, this place I work in has these big floor-to-ceiling glass doors that open. And it's inside the Ritz-Carlton Hotel, okay? Let, let's just preface that, okay? It's inside, and it's really beautiful, you guys. The hotel's really beautiful. Um, it's inside the Ritz-Carlton Hotel in Kapalua, which is in Maui, which is, you know what it's on? It's on those golf courses that they come and play all those professional um, golf. I'm not a golf person, but if you look up the Ritz Carlton Kapalua, it's beautiful. Anyway, that's where I'm working at the Ritz Carlton. I mean, I don't work for the Ritz. I work for a different company, but the space is inside the Ritz. Okay, so I'm inside the Ritz. So every day I have to go in and I have to basically bend down because the door locks at the bottom. It's these tall glass doors. It's like floor to ceiling. And the lock is one of those locks that locks it into the floor. 
Do you guys know what I mean? Like those ones? So every day I have to bend down and I try to wait. And, and, and where the space is, where this little, this little gallery shop is, it's like in a through way between like the main lobby and like heading toward an area where people have their rooms. So it's always a heavily trafficked area. So um, try to wait, try to do it when people aren't around. Because who wants to bend over with your behind out to the world for everyone to see, right? Not me. Hey, Kat. Hey, Kathy. So I'm like unlocking the door. And sometimes I make my hottie go in with me and I get him to unlock the door. Because it's not always easy to unlock. Okay, because so sometimes I'm standing there with my butt in the air, bending up. <laughs> bending over to unlock the store for more than a few minutes, okay? So, um, <laughs> hi, hi Lois, how are you? Anyway, so I'm bending over and I'm unlocking the door and uh, numerous times a day, okay? Because if I have to go to the restroom or whatever, if I'm the only one there, I have to shut the door and lock it, right? And it's like a whole ordeal. So I try to time my bathroom breaks when I know somebody's coming in so that I'm not having to bend over in this like hall. Hey, Karen, bend over in this like through way where everybody can see my behind. So, so one of my coworkers comes in and I go and I've been doing this all day. Now, you have to understand something, you guys. I haven't worked a job like a corporate job in a long time. So I like had to dig through all my clothes and find out. I told you guys I threw away or gave away a lot of my clothes. So I had to dig through and find clothes to wear. It's like a whole been a whole ordeal. So I have these pants that I love and I have like four or five pairs of them because I'm the kind of person, how many of you are the kind of people that if you find something that you like and it fits you and you feel good in it, that you buy numerous pairs of it. Like I'm that person. I'm that person that buys like if I find a pair of shoes I really like, I buy three pairs of the same shoes. Could even be the same color. I'm not that picky. It, you know, the picky part comes when I feel like I, um, you know, I, I like good quality things. So, anyway, so I have like five pairs of these pants that I bought one time. You're you're like that, Lois? Yes, you totally have several. Especially, you guys, if you have to work, like, I don't know. You know what I mean. Anyway, so, and I have them all hanging in my, in my closet, like I did this whole thing where I have all my work clothes together. And these are these big flowy pants. They're big flowy pants. Actually, you're going to laugh. I got them at Target. That's a whole nother story. That's a whole story when, I'll tell you that story later. So I got them at Target and I really like them. They're, I've had them for a long time, maybe three or four years. And they're big flowy pants and I wear that and a black because when you sell art, you need to be wearing like darker, more neutral colors because you don't want to compete with the art, right? So I'm I'm wearing these pants and I go to the bathroom. Now I realize I haven't gone to the bathroom. I went to the bathroom before I left my house, but I didn't go to the bathroom after I changed, obviously. Okay, you guys, I go to the bathroom and I realize, are you ready for this? I have an enormous hole in my pants and the enormous hole in my pants is in the butt. Okay. It gets worse. I have been bending down all day long, showing my ass to the world. Okay. <laughs> I have been bending down all day long <laughs> and I showed my butt to the world. Okay. So I realize this, okay, I realize this, and I come back, and I'm like, oh, my God. So my youngest daughter's texting me, and I tell her that I realize I have a hole in my pants. I tell her, and she's like, oh, my. And then I'm just laughing because I'm like, how many random strangers have walked by? Exactly. How many random strangers have walked by in the Ritz-Carlton? And I've been bending over with my ass out, okay? All right, so. But I'm wearing a really long sweater, so you can't really see the hole in my pants. Well, Tony, I guess it's embarrassing, but there wasn't anybody. I don't know these people, so who? I'm not embarrassed in front of anybody. I was just like, I was just mortified. Anyway, so, <laughs> and the worst part is I didn't even know I had the hole in my pants. <laughs> How are you? 
I've been thinking about you, been in my thoughts. So my ass is to the air, and I've been bending over in front of the entire hotel. Who knows? Whatever. You know. Anyway, so that was the beginning of that night. All right. So the rest of the night goes like this. I mean, it's just one ridiculous escapade after another. So I'm in this, I'm in the gallery after I've discovered that I've all in my pants and all I can do is just like be mortified and I have a very long sweater on. You can't see the hole. Um, but you could, when I bent down, you could, when I bent down, yes, I was giving a free show. That's right. I was giving a free show. So, so <laughs> this couple come in. These two beautiful women. I mean, they're so beautiful. And one of them is having a baby. And they tell me they're there on their baby moon. And they're just really gorgeous. They're both like, it could be like models. You know, have you ever just seen like, anyway, they're so beautiful. They come in and I'm starting talking to them. And all I can think about is the hole in my pants, right? I'm like thinking, I'm just, it's just really in my head because I just discovered it. And I'm standing in the middle of the gallery and I'm talking to them. And you guys, a fly <laughs> flew down my throat. A fly. You guys, <laughs> I was like, <laughs> it was like, oh my God, a fly. All of a sudden, I'm like, <laughs> and I'm like, oh no, oh no. <laughs> and I go over and I find my coffee and I take a sip of coffee because I can't spit it out because it's in my throat. And I'm just like, Today is a day, okay, hole in my pants and fly down my throat, okay, fly down my throat. It's like, it's like, oh my God. I was like, who could make this up? I don't, even, and the, I don't even know where this fly came from. I mean, it's so ridiculous. I didn't, I didn't, anyway. Okay, that was, that was just one day, okay? One day, one day. Then the other day, oh my God. So then the other day, I, um, the other day I had, uh, there was a fire on, <laughs> it was just my day, but that is the kind of stuff that happens to me all the day, all the time, you guys, all I can do is laugh, because what am I going to do? Like Renee says, craft or cry, and I just have to laugh, because I can't do anything, I couldn't do anything else, I just have to laugh, have to laugh, it's just so stupid. It's like only me. I think that stuff only happens to me. Honestly. I think it only happens to me. So that's like, a, that's just like a tip of the iceberg of a day with me. Hey, Emma. I mean, really. <laughs> you would be like, I'm out. Okay, the worst part of this is curly. Okay, so you guys, I don't know if I've ever had a job that didn't end up becoming like something... I don't want to say political, but like something like, like where you step in it and you don't even know you're stepping in it. Cause you, cause you're like, you're like the brand new person and you don't even know. So, you know, they hired me for this job and you guys, they sought me out. I was not looking for this job. Yes. I was looking for a job, but for a job, because I told you guys about the whole mortgage thing, how my, our mortgage broker told me that me working for myself didn't really count. That I had to, <laughs> didn't I tell you guys that? Like I had, he, he basically said to me, you know, you have to have a job, like a, like a, like a paycheck job, not like your own paycheck job. So that's why I even looked for a job because I, that's, that was what I was even doing because I was like, we're trying to buy a house. So I told you guys the rents are crazy high here. Anyway, so I, I can't walk out curly because there's nobody there. And this is the hard part. So when you're going from a retail job to a gallery job. So a retail job is usually an hourly plus what? Like a tiny bit of commission. Like do they even pay you commission at a retail job? The, I know that this company pays some commission. I wouldn't say it's great commission for a retail job. I, look, I don't know. I, I've never really worked a retail job. You guys know retail better than me. When you switch to a gallery, what you pay is you don't pay as high of a salary but you pay really good commission. You pay commission. That is where, that's where you get your good salespeople, right? So right now they're in an interim of like not doing either. Like, and you can't get, I didn't want, 
so I started this job and then the employees at that particular venue were super loyal to the guy that was their manager and he, they offered him to manage a different store but he didn't want to and he quit so they all quit well one of them quit one of them I told you she decided she was sick and she's on disability for three months or something and then some of the other people I don't know why the other people quit like you know every company has a history and a lot of times they have it and you're stepping into the middle of it it's like it's almost like being married in a family, right? You're stepping into some stuff that you don't even know what you're stepping into the dynamic of it. Well, that's where I'm at with this. You guys, I'm going to do a reverse collage transfer, but I've got to let it totally dry because some of the ones I did last week didn't come out really great because of the, it let them dry. It's going to be a pineapple, but I really like this part. So I, I've kind of stepped in the middle of their, their whole, their company thing going on that I'm not privy to. Like, I'm really not privy to it. So... They, so I, I don't have anybody to, I have two guys that are working with me, both, one is very, very part-time, and I'm really le lucky he's there because he has a lot of experience with this company, but the other one is a manager of another store, and he's only doing it to help me out, so it's like, hi, Anne, hi, Mary, so I don't know, so I can't walk out, you guys, there's nothing for me to walk out, I mean, I could, but then I'd have to shut the store. And I've kind of put off, like, doing anything, I mean, because I don't want to hire anybody. I don't want to hire somebody to come in and have to learn, like, 500 million bits of information on products that we're not going to sell. Does that make sense? Does that, does that make sense to anybody? I'm drinking two coffees. This is my keto coffee. This is the one that has, like, coconut milk and whatever else in it. Yeah, made like a, it's like called a fat coffee. And this is black coffee. Because the oily coffee sometimes gets to me. I mean, it's fine. Everybody else drinks it. You're arting today. Oh, Laura, I love you. I've been meaning to chat with you. I just, girl, I barely know if I'm coming or going. So, I don't know. And the verdict's out of whether this job is really for me. Because I'm telling you, I'm wear it's wearing me out. Is actually wearing me out. It is so ridiculous. How much it's wearing me out. So I didn't want to hire, like, until they're paying full commission and until the gallery set up to have something to sell, I can't really hire a good art consultant because nobody's going to want to come to work there if you see this. I mean, the store is beautiful, but it's a retail store. You know, changing from a retail store to a... You mean it gets too coconutty? Um, yeah, it has coconut milk and MCT oil in it. It's like... It's like... I don't know. It's a fat coffee. You know, it has like... I don't eat... I try not to eat too much dairy. It just doesn't do well with me. So it's like... Um, I make mine with coffee coconut milk like coconut full fat you know coconut cream I guess is what it is like the cream on top of coconut milk and it has coconut oil MCT oil in it and some macadamia nut milk which if you guys haven't tried macadamia nut milk try it it's awesome so you guys have just one day in the antics of my life if you, if you were like around all the time, you'd be like, you'd shake your head. I mean, like last week I got lost in the hotel, the, the inner parts of the hotel, trying to find where the mail room was to pick up a package. It was just, you guys. And I don't know where to take the trash out. It's a whole thing. You can't fall asleep. Oh, Laura. Love you, girl. Yeah, right? Milkademia. I like it, too. It's Macadip Magnet Milk. It's really good. I think this lemonade thing will look good in here. So I just came on to just chat with you guys and see what you're up to. So, you guys, Mary, how many days a week? I did find my way out. You guys would have laughed so hard, though, and it was ridiculous. 
it's a huge hotel. It's an enormous hotel. It's on, if you look it up, look it up, look up the Ritz-Carlton Kapalua. Kapalua spelled K-A-P-A-L-U-A, -A Kapalua. Um, it's a huge, it's, it's a huge property. It's beautiful. Oh, I, you know what? It was this or not coming on at all. Mary, I was talking earlier about like what you guys were talking about. And uh, my, my thing is, I think we all just need to be looking for the next thing. Like, even if it's like, even if it's streaming on Facebook or I don't know, does Vimeo offer live streaming? <laughs> family reunions can be stressful I agree but you know what you can also make them fun if you choose to make it fun anyway I got some of these glue sticks you guys on Amazon they were the Amazon glue sticks and they're fine and they're super cheap although you guys probably all got glue from the school glue deals right what's on what was school glue Well, I was, we were talking about it. I mean, you were talking about it and you brought up a good point. I did go on a creative arts collaboration and I looked and saw what they said. I looked at my views. My views aren't down, but I, I don't know. Like, I don't, I will tell you this. Okay. My views on live streaming are up. My views on regular videos are not. And I find that surprising because I've been making some shorter videos and generally those are the ones where you get, where I can just speak for myself, where I get the most views. And for those of you who don't know, this is a glue book. It's a glue book for no reason. Uh, I don't think YouTube's going away either, Mary, but I do think that it's really smart for you to like, It's, it's really smart for you to diversify and do some Facebook live, do, do some Facebook live if you can, or whatever it else it is. So this was a book you guys, I found at a, they were throwing it away. Okay. And I loved it. I loved the cover and the pattern. This is the Tim Holtz. They have some knobs. This is like the plumbing knob and I liked it. And then I just glued a few pages together because it was a very big book and the pages were so thin. And then I just started doing like, it's kind of like an art journal, but it's like a stream of consciousness in a glue book, right? And it's whatever I found. You guys, that's just how it rolls with me. I don't, I can plan a lot, but it doesn't work. I love this book too. You guys, sometimes when I'm like really having a rough day, I just come home and glue in it. <laughs> it's so stupid, but I do. I'm just like gluing it and gluing in it. And I have not finished my magazine journal. I still have it here. I haven't even, guys, I'm telling you, I've been working 13 hours a day. It is kicking my behind. It is really kicking my behind. Mary, when are you guys doing your next Zoom? You guys, have you guys gone over to Mary's channel? It's the Mary Atier. See her right there. And she and Jerry Bellini do a monthly Zoom. I haven't, I only got to go to one and it was super fun. I haven't been able to get to go to another one. Um, I'm hoping to, and that might be the way to go mirror zooming, zoom, zoom, zooming. It's okay not to finish. I have so many, do you guys have so many projects that you haven't finished? Oh, thank you, Laura. Oh, Mary says she's no longer collabing. Oh, okay. I get it. Well, you can do your own Zoom, Mayor. Jersey said, it's not stupid. It's slipping awesome. It's a kick butt book. It is a stressless glue book. I'm telling you. You guys find yourself one. And I love repurposing because this is an out-of-date college handbook and it would not it would have just been in the pit and then in the trash yep someday you're gonna zoom again I haven't been able you guys I only catch you Mary because you, you're on before I go to bed otherwise I haven't been able to catch anybody it's like or I can watch it later sometimes I put it on and listen to it did you guys see hang on I'll tell you who it is 
I wanted, I have loved this collaboration and I haven't, I haven't watched lately, but I was following, I'll tell you what it is. Give me a second. It's a really good collaboration and let me see. Okay, let me see if I can find it. Okay, let's see. Okay, so one of our our crafting mamas, one of our people that hangs out with us, is Kristen Van Valkenburg. And she and Denise Lush are doing a journal in a box, altering a box in a collaboration. You guys need to go check it out. It is so good. It is so, so, so good. And let me put, I'll put Kristen's channel in the link. Let me see if I can get to it. And it's so good. She's doing journal in a box and it is incredibly inspiring. And let me see. Let me put, I'm going to put Kristen's channel in the live chat and it's so good. You guys will love it and you will love her art and she's doing it with Denise Lush. That's Kristen's channel. You guys go and check her out. It's Kristen Van Valkenburg and you spell it. Her last name Kristen, K-R-I-S-T-I-N, and then Van Valkenburg, V-A-N, and then another word, V-A-L-K-E-N-B-U-R-G. And it is really, really, really good. It's really good. You guys will be totally inspired. Everybody else will start making their own. I think this is my favorite page. I don't know. My favorite pages, my favorite layout. This is like some curtains from... How many of you guys get the shade store catalogs? They're really awesome. So this is this is like a curtain catalog, and then there's some stamping, and then this is a mandala stamp. Christy, see a mandala stamp, and then this. I found this picture of this woman in a kimono. I just loved it, and then it has dress pattern paper and some tape, and there's paint on it. I don't know if you can see it all really well. And then this has some, I don't know, this is an index of some kind, and then a ticket. <coughs> it's it's really good. You guys go over and check it out and show Kristen some love. She is she is such a sweet girl, such a sweet lady, and she's really inspiring. And she comes and hangs out with us in the chat sometimes. I don't know where I got that stamp. I had it's somewhere in my mess. I do have some mandala stamps. Somewhere in my mouth. Have you guys been seeing the whole controversy on st angel stamps or angel stamping? And I mean, you know, the angel policies for stamps and, 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 hi, Julia. The, the policy for angel stamps and die cuts. Yeah, that's been a big, con that's a big conversation right now, too. So I guess it just tells all of us if you're going to, um, Curly says, I love Kristen. Her art makes me smile, which is a big deal. You saw that video? Which video? So, Diana, so like when you buy a stamp, like, let's see. Let's see. Okay, I have this stamp from Stamp, this set from Stampin' Up. Okay. And say I'm going to use it in something that I sell. Okay. I'm going to use it. So I need to go online and I need to look at what the Stampin' Up! policy is for, for allowing me to use it. Because some things they only allow you to use in your own work. Hi, Denise. Like, if I was going to stamp it in this journal, that would be one thing because I'm not selling it. But they do have guidelines to which you can... Uh, different companies have different things, okay? They have guidelines to which you can use it. Like... One of our crafting mamas used to be a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, and she said they would never, you could never use, it could never be a single stamped image for sale. Meaning, like, if I say I was going to make a journal and I was going to put just this stamp on one page, I wasn't going to do anything else to alter it, 
that might not be in accordance to their angel policies. And the same is with stencils and the same is with die cuts. So you have to know your products. It's been like a big deal. Somebody was telling me somebody's Etsy store got taken down because what were they selling? They were selling die cuts or something and they didn't, I don't know. Laura says it makes sense to her that they have guidelines because they sell them for personal use, not so much for people to sell, but I don't sell my stuff, so it doesn't affect me. Yeah, but think about this. You know, we all get into making our own paper crafting, right? And so we're like really into it, making our paper crafting. And say you've just made one too many journals, which I am totally, I'm totally, um, that's my problem. I do make a lot of journals and I don't use them all. And say I have some stamped pages in it and I go to sell it. Not even for a lot of money because you know that you probably have tons more money into every project you make than what you get out, right? What you let go of. So, you know, it's like one of those things. So I go to sell it and then I can't sell it because or I get my store gets closed down because I'm selling something that I was unclear about. So I'm just saying before you go buy a bunch of products, make sure you know if I mean make sure you know the fair the fair use of it. What they allow you to do with it and what they don't. Because I really love this book. I'm glad I made it. Oh, it's I don't know if it'll ever be finished. Yeah, it can affect a lot of people. You guess sort your stamps or just create your own stamp. But it's not just stamps, Mary. It's stencils. It's um, die cuts. Now I'm, I'm pretty sure that I, I, I try to only buy stamps that, that allow you to, that don't have such strict guidelines because I don't want to be thinking about it. Or I just make my own. Yeah. Mary says, make sure you look, you sort your stamps for with those that you can stamp and use in your sale projects and those that you can't. You know, I don't know about that, Mary Lou. I don't know. Mary Lou says, do we have to worry about selling a journal with scrap pa scrapbook paper you purchased? I have no idea. Good question. I would assume not because I'm assuming that they, you know, you're not copying the scrap of paper you're actually buying it as a material right to use I would assume Christy Tim Holtz might be doing stuff like that because it's not him it's the company ranger that he works with right they may have angel policies and Christy says it says it sounds a lot it says a lot about a company to her You know what, Mary Lou, I think you I think you just have to go in with your eyes open. I think you have to read the products. Mary says that makes sense. Support those who agree with that you agree with their philosophy. Mary says she thinks mass sales would be frowned upon. Christy says they don't the, we're talking about scrapbook paper. They don't, as far as I know, so many big time artists use their stuff. Well that's good. Oh, you mean Tim Holtz? Are we talking about scrapbook paper? I just say try to go in with your. I say just try to go in with your eyes open. Denise says, "How does AliExpress get away with selling knockoffs? Because it's made in China and there's nothing to regulate. AliExpress, all their stuff is made in Asia, so there's nothing to regulate." any of that in Asia. That's why you, you see all those knockoffs from, um, so Joni said, oh, I'm missing it. That's why you see all those like crazy, like purse knockoffs. Joni said, I made some mini journals with scrapbook paper and stickers and Etsy said, no, no. What? Is 
So Joni says so if she wants to sell stuff like that, she sells it to friends and family. Wow. <laughs> Chrissy says if Tim Holtz did that, they'd have to go after Nick, the booksmith, who I love Nick. I haven't seen her videos in a long time. I should go back and watch some of them. Um, Nick, the booksmith, because she's her biggest marketer. You know, all I say is just get to know the company. Look, there, I'm sure there must be some sort of website or some sort of thing where you can go on and just get, put in angel policies and put in the brands of paper and stuff you're buying. Yeah, it is getting, it does get ridiculous. They do push small people into the, I agree with you. But you know, I'm not telling you that to get you down. I'm just saying, like, it's been a conversation. That's been another conversation that's been happening a lot, or I've seen it happen a lot. So I just say, go in with your eyes open. You know, like, go in and just decide, like, this is what I'm going to do, and I'm going to find out if I can sell... If I, you know, especially if you're going to sell it. <clears throat> yeah, get to know company policies. Joni said, it's just like sewing, it's just like using a sewing pattern and then selling the finished product, the finished item. But she got threatened with a lawsuit over that once. Wow. Well, you guys, I don't make enough of anything to make it in volume to any of the above. Yes, Chrissy, you're right. Um, Chrissy says, Cage Fish and Emma have videos of making your own stamps. So does Mary. Go over and watch Mary. Maridel has them, too. I think that's how you're going to stick it to them. You know what? It's It's not difficult to make your own stamps. But anyway, I loved working on this book. And I have many more pages to go. And I cut out things all the time for it. You know what? I'm not trying to stick it to anybody. I'm just telling you because some 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 of you really do go out and sell all your stuff and you're making journals and you're making different things and you're making you know, you're selling your stuff and that's awesome. I don't think it impacts them. Laura said she likes supporting other artists and she tries to do that. She hopes it doesn't impact them in a negative way. I don't think it impacts them in a negative way. I think that it probably impacts them in a really positive way. And the fact that you do it um, helps support them. You know, I wouldn't worry about it. But that's just the conversations that have been going on and some of the things that I've heard. <laughs> Chrissy says, girl, I'm horrible about being a loudmouth anarchist. <laughs> anyway, I can be a bullhorn rebel. I'm all over it. I hear you. Mary's talking about carving. And Chrissy says, she's definitely going to watch. But she's scared that she's going to cut her hand. And Mary says, Christy, just remember, carve away from your hand. Carve away from your hand. So... I don't know, you guys. I think that a lot of times we can just blow things out of proportion. But if you know, like if you really are going to like do something and do it for a business or try to make money doing it, it's better to go into it with your eyes open. Don't you think? It's better to go into it with with your eyes, your, your eyes wide open. So then you don't have any surprises. No surprises. It seem, Denise says, it seems like a slippery slope. 
And Carly says, it's just skin. It'll grow back. She's just giving you... <laughs> yes, eyes wide open. Denise says, seems like a slippery slope. I wonder if you bought something with stamped image then decided you didn't want to and resold it. I don't think... I don't think the reselling of anything, like you can resell all your stamps and stuff like that. I don't think that's the problem. I think it's if you're like, say, say you buy a stamp from a company and they have a, a policy where you can't sit, where you can't sell anything with just a single stamped image, meaning that there's, all you've done is take their stamp and stamped it on a piece of paper and, they, and that's their policy. So if you, if you do that on all your products instead of like, I don't know. I think there's some sort of a copyright thing that says that if, I think if a certain percentage of it is your original work, then it's all good. But you know what? I don't know. I say do your due diligence. And I say don't stress out about it. You know, I don't think any of us are going to be like, I'm not going to be like, oh, well, we made all that. And, you know, it, it's just, it's just good knowledge because I'm like, I'll tell you what happened to me. I was going to make these, I used to make these like bags and there was this stamp that I really loved. And I thought, oh, that will save me so much time. Cause I, but I made them, you know, they're made out of like recycled clothing and, and I wanted to use, I saw this stamp and it wasn't any like, it wasn't somebody's personal artwork. It was, well, obviously somebody made it, so it must have been. But it was just, it was geometric patterns. It was like some circles and squares and lines. It wasn't anything identifiable. You know, I don't think you can copyright a circle, you know. But I was going to use it to print on these bags. And I don't even know why I looked. I probably wouldn't even look normally, but. I guess we were talking about something like this in one of the groups, so I looked, and they had, and the stamp wasn't cheap. It was like, I don't know. It was not cheap. The stamp was not cheap. It, and so I looked at it, and I thought to myself, if I'm going to spend, the stamp was probably like 50 bucks, which was more, a stencil, it was a stencil, sorry. Stencil is probably like 50 bucks, which is way more than I would ever spend on anything. But I was thinking, you know, I'm going to use it on these bags. I'll get the return. Well, when I read their policies, it strictly forbid you to stamp it on anything you were going to resell. So then I didn't spend the money on the, um, on the stamp, you know, so I'm just saying do your due diligence. I couldn't be a nurse either. You've only done gluing in a composition book? Go to the bookstore and find yourself a book you really love. There's so many out there, you guys, that are just going to end up in a landfill. You know, go and check them out. Like, I love this book. In fact, I looked for another one when I went back, but I couldn't find it. I know, $50, right? But it was a, it was a really, honestly, it was a nice stencil. It was a nice stencil. I ended up making my own, but for $50, that's just ridiculous, right? But I was thinking, oh, it'll save me time, and it was super durable. But it was huge, Mary. It's a really big, oversized one. All right, my lovelies. I'm probably not going to stand much longer because I have to go to work. i got to get myself ready to go to work. But how many of you guys want to do a really very brief, ultimately very brief meditation? A very brief woo-woo. Anybody up for a brief woo-woo? Anyone want a little brief woo-woo? We could do brief woo-woo. Brief is the optimal word. You guys, this was some paper, and I loved it. It was from, I have a whole, I made a bunch of washi tape from... Um, we use an alcohol inks. I oh, love you, Mary. I'm so happy. I was happy that I got to hang out with you this morning. And it was super fun. And hopefully, I mean, it's, it's this morning, your time, it's nighttime, my time, but hopefully I'll be able to catch you again because I'm missing streaming with you guys on Fridays, but it's just not going to happen for a while. I don't even know if I'm going to be able to get back to us. I, um, 
a regular streaming schedule until I get more intact with what I'm doing. You'll briefly woo-woo? Okay, good. Well, I'm going to briefly woo-woo. So if you guys want to go get some energized water, go get your water for energized water, then do it. To put it down on the other side. Of course, you know me, I, I can't do anything the way I intend to do it. I even missed Barb. I missed our Barb Owen. I missed, she was on Friday and I missed it. Like, you know, she only streams once a month. You think I'd get it together? I was working. Have a great week, Johnny. Big hugs to you, too. And for those that want to join next month's ATC swap, head over to Crafting Mamas, our Facebook group, or message me at craftingmamasinfo at gmail.com. I know some of you don't do Facebook. And you guys support each other. You know, really, really, really support each other. Go over, chat, craft, hang out. No, there's no new ideas. None whatsoever. Feel free to use anything I do. Uh, you know, like, I don't own it. So, get your, get your um, water. If you want to do some, if you're going to do the meditation with us. For those that want energized water. And you don't need it if you don't want it. It's just some people like to drink it after the meditation or during the week. And and I missed your I missed your live stream, Christy, with your with your giveaway. Your thou no, it was Johnny's live stream with her thousand subscriber giveaway. I missed it. I didn't even get to like. I mean, I saw it after I, I saw the notification after it was done, but I missed it. So congratulations to Johnny. For her thousand subscribers and to those that won the beautiful giveaway that she did. You send any yes, I got your email, Julia. I will um I'm I will send you your partners. Diana ended up having to do the partner thing for me because you guys I was working thirteen hours. I just was not happening on my end. No matter what I wanted. Julia, I have one of your partners. The other one, I have to find their address. And I'll send it all to you. And... I'm going to glue this one page down. And we'll get started in just a second. I'm going to see if my hottie wants to stay and do meditation, too. I don't know if he does or not. Sometimes he always says, you never tell me. I mean, he does his own meditation every day, but... Kind of good when we all do it together. Well, I'm loving this book. I'm, I'm, sometimes I know that it doesn't make sense to anyone else, but I'm loving it. And I'm going to keep working on it. It's going to take me a while to finish it, though. Definitely not, definitely not finished. You sent your AT, ATC out and forgot to put a note in it. Did you put your return address? You can ma you message a note to the person on Facebook. I've done that sort of thing, too. All right, you guys, give me two seconds, and we'll get to our woo-woo. Um, happy to ca Oh, I'm happy you're here, too, Julia. So for those of you, if it's your first time, we do just a brief meditation, less than 10 minutes probably. And it's just energy work. It's just really you aligning yourself with your your things, like your divineness, your column of light. Just, re, just honestly giving attention to your column of light, which you have, which is with you all the time. And it's basically giving you the opportunity just to be connected and to realign yourself. I need the woo-woo, you guys. I'm telling you, I don't know whether I'm coming or going. Hang on one second, though. I just want to see if my hottie wants to do it with us. I'm just going to grab him. He's in the other room trying to be quiet.
Okay, so he's on his way. He's going to come do it with us. So, has anybody ever not, has anybody, like, have any questions about it or anything like that before we start? Sometimes, sometimes if it's something you're not used to or you, you don't know about, you can be just cautious or, you know, not really understanding. But all it does is connect you with you. It's just it's just a guided meditation connecting you with your energy and your higher self and grounding you into the earth's energy to where, I mean, we are, she is our mother. You know, the earth is our mother. And connecting to her can also bring clarity and it can bring balance. It can also bring calm. It can bring... Um, it can bring an overwhelming sense of suddenly feeling like yourself. So that's just kind of what it is. Okay, so let's get started. All you need to do to participate is inhale through your nose and exhale out through your mouth. You can do this, you can do this meditation with your eyes open or your eyes closed. I suggest you try it with your eyes closed. And you can do it sitting up or lying down. If for some reason you fall asleep, that's fine. You, your body knows, your being soul spirit knows exactly what you need and you get it every time. And you can't get it wrong because it's just you. There's no way you can get it wrong. Okay, let's get started. So inhale through your nose and exhale out through your mouth. Receive and release. Receive and release. Imagine yourself in a column of light. When you look up, you can't see the end. And when you look down, you can't see the end. This is your column of light. It is unique to your being, soul, spirit. Allow your column of light to spread around you six feet in all directions. Give your column of light the suggestion, heart of the earth. And with that, your column of light is right there, deep in the heart of the earth. Give your column of light big roots, like a big oak tree, deep in the heart of the earth. Let's ask the earth to share with us her energy. I see this like beautiful golden light, but you can see it, feel it, think it, or just know it any way that works for you. Feel this beautiful golden light energy rising up through your column, filling your feet and ankles, calves and knees, thighs and hips. Feel it filling the base of your spine, your lower abdomen, your waist, your chest and back your shoulders, your arms, your wrists, your hands, and out every finger. Feel it filling your neck and throat, your face and head, and feel it fountaining out the top of your head as high as you can imagine. Ready? Breathe it in. Breathe it in. And breathe it in. Take a moment to enjoy your connection to the earth. I'd like you to focus on your head, the column of light above your head, and give your column of light the suggestion, heart of the central sun, heart of creation, heart of the divine. And with that, your column of light is right there in this beautiful cosmic angelic realm. Give your column of light the same roots you did below your feet above your head. Now let's ask this beautiful angelic realm to share with us this cosmic angelic energy. I see this energy like beautiful silvery diamonds but you can see it, feel it, Think it, or just know it, any way that works for you. Feel this beautiful diamond light energy pouring through your column of light, mixing with the gold earth energy and your energy, 
and spreading six feet in all directions. Feel it filling your head and face, your throat and neck, your shoulders, your arms, your wrists, your hands, and out every finger. Feel it filling your chest and back, your waist, your lower abdomen, the base of your spine, and feel it pouring through your hips, thighs, knees, calves, and ankles, and out the bottom of your feet, expelling any and all energy deep into the heart of the earth. Ready? Breathe it in. Breathe it in. And breathe it in. <coughs> Take a moment to enjoy your connection to heaven and earth. Now I'd like you to focus where your roots are above your head. And on the inhale, breathe in and receive peace, balance, clarity, and freedom. And on the exhale, give your body personality permission to let go of any energy that no longer serves you. Ready? Receive in love. Release in love. Receive and release. Receive and release. Now let's focus one foot above your head. Receive peace, balance, clarity, and freedom. And on the exhale, let go of anything that no longer serves you. Receive in love. Receive in love. Receive in love. Focus on the top of your head. Receive peace, balance, freedom, and clarity. And release anything that no longer serves you. Receive in love. Receive in love. Receive in love. Focus on the center of your forehead. Receive peace, balance, clarity, and freedom. And release anything that no longer serves you. Ready? Receive in love. Release in love. Receive and release. Receive and release. Focus on your throat. Receive peace, balance, clarity, and freedom. And on the exhale, release anything that no longer serves you. Ready? Receive in love. Release in love. Receive, release. Receive, release. Receive, release. Focus on your heart. Receive peace, balance, 
clarity and freedom and release anything that no longer serves you. Ready? Receive in love. Release in love. Receive. Release. Receive. Release. Receive. Release. Receive. Release. Focus on your waist. Receive peace, balance, clarity, and freedom, and release anything that no longer serves you. Receive in love. Receive in love. Receive in love. Receive in love. Focus on your lower abdomen. Receive peace, balance, Clarity and freedom receive in love. Receive, release. Receive, release. Receive, release. Focus on the base of your spine. Receive peace, balance, clarity, and freedom. Receive in love. Release in love. Receive, release. Receive, release. Receive, release. Focus one foot below your feet. Receive peace. Balance, clarity, and freedom. Receive in love. Release in love. Receive. Release. Receive. Release. Focus one foot below your feet. Receive peace, balance, clarity, and freedom. Receive in love. Release in love. Receive. Release. Receive, release. Focus where your column of light 
anchors into the heart of the earth where your roots are. Receive peace, balance, clarity, and freedom. Receive in love. Release in love. Receive, release. Receive, release. Receive, release. I'd like you to imagine an infinity symbol starting and where your roots are above your head in the heart of creator creation, the heart of the central sun, crossing through your heart, entering deep into the heart of the earth, crossing back through your heart and ending where it began. On the inhale, receive love from the earth, from the divine, from the heart of creator creation energy, the heart of the central sun. On the exhale, give back love to the heart of the earth, the heart of the central sun, and to the heart of the divine. Ready? Receive and give. Receive and give. Receive and give. One more time, receive and give. And when you're ready, open your eyes and come back. Well, I just want to thank you guys for hanging out with me, being my crafty peeps. You know, like and subscribe to each other. Go and hang out. Enjoy this community. Create. If you don't have a community you enjoy, create that one. You know, find your like-minded people. Find your tribe and, and create it. Nothing's stopping you. Nothing is stopping you. And you're all welcome to join our Facebook group at Crafting Mamas. I appreciate the thumbs up and I appreciate your comments always. Oh, I love you, Christy. Thank you for being here. And if you guys want to go over and learn how to do some amazing mandala art, go over to Christy's channel, which is right there, Meta Mandala Art and Booksmith, and go check it out. And you'll really enjoy crafting along with her. I know that I love you and just imagine all the ridiculousness I can tell you next time. <laughs> and as always, I will see you next time. I don't know when that will be, but as always, from my heart to your heart, I'm sending you so much aloha until soon. <laughs> Bye.